In 1444, one of the biggest contenders towards the great power status within the uh, world or known world was the Mamluk Sultanate, or as they called themselves back then, the State of the Circassians, prior to which it was known as the State of the Turks. The Mamluks at origins having been slave soldiers that eventually overthrew the Ayyubids that in our timeline here only survive in the little province of Hisan Kaifa, where uh, al -Sal Salih Salah Din Ayyubid, the, I don't know how many, it, but quite a little bit of, is uh, still in charge of them. But yeah, the Ayyubids will not be around for too much longer. That being said, after they rebelled and they uh, formed the uh, state of the Turks, of course, the predominantly Turkic slave soldiers controlled the nation. And then afterwards, the Circassians, with the ascent of the Burji dynasty, which were at origins Circassians. But it is also mentioned that they were Turkic Circassians. So maybe a mixture of the both who knows the point is that um, they're in charge now and in 1444 there was a pretty high possibility for that Mamluks to actually take out the Ottomans They got a little bit uh, unlucky with the second Ottoman Mamluk war in which the Mamluks basically became an Ayalit of the Turks, right? But in our game, that's not gonna happen. We'll do a standard uh, Approach here. We're gonna be trying to wipe out the Ottomans as soon as possible in the early bit of the campaign And if we get 5,000 likes I'm gonna do another video on the strongest, most insane Arabian nation, Najd. And we're gonna get that special achievement as Najd as well, where we unify Islam, despite only starting with like 10 development or something. <laughs> also, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. It would really encourage me to make more videos like these in the future. And I'm really trying to reach 200k by end of August, which is just a few weeks away, actually. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do, of course, as always, is the estate. It's gonna be a fairly standard estate with a plus one mana privileges you can find my estate video uh, link in the description of this video one very important thing to keep note of is that you can give out the strong duchies privilege from the very get-go since we start with the hejaz and fadl as our vassals and take note we will be diplo vassalizing medina we realistically can diplo vassalize the entirety of the uh, arabian peninsula here if you go over here look at that so we're not going to do it for all of them but we will do it for some of them such as maybe fezan because they are guaranteed by Tunis unless we want to go to war with Tunis but we could vassalize them diplomatically and then use them against Tunis later down the line since our main focus in the early part of the campaign is going to be to actually go up against the uh, Ottomans we're going to get an admiral's wall and we're going to start shipping our units over here because we will declare our no CB war against um, the uh, Byzantine Greeks I think we can probably get an alliance with Akwa Yunlu II before the Ottomans get that alliance it's pretty important a lot of the times the Ottomans ally Akwa Yunlu if we ally them before Beforehand, then uh, it's gonna make it easier for us to um, use them against the Ottomans afterwards we can also diplo vassalize Dulkadir most of the times I'm gonna try it if it's not possible then um, of course I'm just gonna attack them we also want to get relations with Cyprus as again from an event they will become our vassals also so we are essentially the vassal swarm master over here let's also not forget to get our indebted to the merchants guild loans and yes I know what some of you are thinking why did you give out the privileges now if if I gave out the privileges after expanding, I would have gotten more crownlands. That is true, to be fair. Probably should have waited with it, but hey, it's fine. Mistakes were made. The reason we do the no CB war against uh, the Byzantines is because we need to use the cores that the Byzantines have to feed them back from the Ottomans, which essentially is going to cut off the uh, majority of the income that the Ottomans get. And it's also going to cut their country up in half. So from that, what happens is it essentially makes them collapse super 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 fast early on in the campaign truth be told with the ottomans the longer you wait to attack them the easier it is for them to destroy you because they get stronger as they go in the campaign they are at their weakest in the early bit of um, the run we're also going to be building some more galleys since we're going to need a few more galleys against the ottomans when the war starts i actually forgot to build them from the beginning so i kind of wasted a couple of months there we're also going to be taking this secondary army over to constantinople to take it out fast before the ottomans themselves actually manage Managed to get this a lot of the times they get a claim on Constantinople very early on in the campaign because of the new domination DLC and the fact that they can uh, get it from their mission tree now super early outnumbered and outgunned the Byzantines shall fall fairly easy to our mighty Mamelukius Armius I hate that uh, minus two crossing penalty there but hey it is uh, necessary sadly there you go managed to wipe out their units and also there you go 5350 so they're willing to become our diplo vassal let's try and rush a little bit with uh 
getting them uh, to 190 Diplo relations. They seem to hate the Karamanis, their rival, so let's scornfully insult their rival. That brought us up to 190, so we can vassalize them in one month. And there you go, boys. Within just one year since the start date of the game, we managed to Diplo vassalize Dulkadir. Now it's time for to do the same with Medina. Whenever your leader dies, you're gonna get the Mameluk succession. This is because we start with the awesome Mameluk government type that also offers us admin skill plus two for the monarch, autonomy cooldown, governing capacity, and a few other things, including the interaction over here. We can go for an Egyptian Mameluk uh, leader, or we can go for a Syrian or a Circassian one. If we go for the Circassian one, we get the uh, army tradition and 100% uh, legitimacy, but these interactions, you get more stuff from having more provinces of that particular culture. So that means if we go for an Egyptian leader, we would get a lot more manpower and a lot more uh, money because we have more Egyptian provinces. That's why I personally think I'm going to go for the Egyptian one right now. And holy mother of schnapple dopes, 636 is insane, my dude. All right, let's go click this, enforce religion, sure, whatever. Oh, and are you kidding me? They actually discovered my spy bra moment right now. Big bad bra moment. <laughs> and this time for Medina. Waka waka. Eh eh. Holy city. Me eh eh. Alright, now uh, we're gonna click the first one here after the Mishonski. And we're gonna give all of Medina over to Hejaz. Now we're gonna improve relations with Hejaz so we can integrate them later down the line. But that means we got one of our uh, Diplo relation slots cleared up so we can use that for vassalizing Fezan after we finish the war with the Byzantines. Because we want to get some claims on these areas here, what I'm gonna gonna do is I'm gonna make it so that uh, I set my vital interest around the uh, provinces of my vassal. This way it's gonna encourage my vassal to get some claims on said provinces. Okay, we just got the Zisak of Constantinople. All right, let's bring the rest of the fleet here so we can defeat their fleet and maybe in the process we can even grab some of their ships from there and uh, make them our own a slippy -o slip slips if you know what I'm saying here, bro. All right, cool. Uh, we also got to deal with uh, Trebizond, or sorry, uh, Theodoro. So let's go ahead and attack Theodoro too. Don't think I actually am going to do anything with them because I just want to quickly piece out the Byzantines so I can uh, do my war against the Ottomans. Actually, I got 100% already on them so I don't need to worry about the uh, Trebizondians or whatever you call them. There you go. We vassalized the Byzantines and we've taken the province of Athens directly because uh, if we didn't do that then they would break away as a free independent nation since they start as the vassal of the Byzantines. And whenever you uh, vassalize a nation, their vassals become independent. If you fully annex them, then uh, all of their subjects and such uh, become yours. 1st of September 1447 a day that shall live in infantry because we got a lot of infantry and we're gonna be schnapple duping these mofofos. Alright, uh, they're I like to carry my no, I'm not gonna bother with Ramazan. Let's go. Let's go. Let's destroy them. Okay. So right now, majority of the Ottoman army is over on the Anatolian side. We're gonna take advantage of that and we're gonna try and uh, siege most of the Balkans. Let them siege over our provinces. In the meanwhile, we're gonna set up some defensive edicts over here. And they also have to siege down my uh, brand new vassal of Dulkadir on the way. We have about the same amount of troops as they have, so we should be a okay. We can always recruit more mercenaries if we need to. Always remember not to take the Ottoman army lightly because even though we have stronger units at the start they are still the Ottomans and they are pretty overpowered let's face it. I'm also going to be barraging both Selanik and Gelibolu so we can grab these up quickly. In fact Gelibolu should also be prioritized. I didn't think about this. Well I did think about it but I was too lazy to move my troops to Constantinople. So I guess I'm just going to pay for my laziness okay. <laughs> we'll be fine don't worry we'll be okay. Alright boys time to Carpetia Sijicus here. Every single province in the Balkans and then after we get that war score we gotta swap on over to the Anatolian bits but by that point the Ottomans will have lost enough economic output so that uh, it's gonna be significantly easier for us to actually take over what's left of the Ottoman Empire. One thing to note is that Gelibolu and Salonika are super easy to fall because you barrage and assault them but Edirne is a little bit RNG keep that in mind it's enough to leave uh, three to four thousand units here the rest of the army should be focused on wiping out whatever Ottoman troops might have crossed over to the Balkans. In my case, they have 14,000 units, which I can easily get rid of after I um, siege down the rest of uh, the Balkans here. Not in a rush. They just have 0%, so they still should take a few months, maybe a year, before that falls. Hopefully. And 
just as I said that, of course, the freaking fort's gonna fall. It's gonna go up to 21 or 14 percent next. Same logic applies with the fort in Coachelli. We're gonna be barraging it, and we will assault depending on uh, whether the Ottomans are gonna push us or not. If they don't push us, we're not gonna assault it for this fort here. It's not needed. What's left of the Ottoman army is sieging down uh, Halab, so I literally can just carpet siege the entirety of what's in uh, Anatolia right now. Hey, yo, Adana, I came to eat all your kebab, yeah, bro. Come on, give it all to me. Give it all to me. And yes, I know I'm wasting a little bit of manpower, but hey, I took you out in 17 days, all right, Borowski? All right, Borowski? Plus, because Adana's the one in charge of this particular siege here. Oh, sorry, uh, Ramazan's in charge of this particular siege. Because of that, when I fully annex them, that province is not going to be sieged anymore. So um, that's just double whammy right there. Wait, what? They rejected? I'm sorry, what? Oh, it's because of the fleet, because we're fighting their fleet, bro. All right, you all. Now it should be fine then. Let's see. We got to wait till the 22nd of April. Cool. All right, there you go. We got Adana. Core it up, of course. And let's actually start getting claims on uh, Karaman. I think that's a good idea too. Now, the situation is uh, fairly good for us. We've pretty much completely destroyed the Ottoman army. They got 15,000 that are trying to retake Coachelli. So I'm going to do my peace deal. I'm going to give most of the cores back to the Byzantines. Plus, I'm taking Tolchu so I can release Bulgaria. I'm taking Avlona so I can afterwards attack Ragusa. Come on, Ennis. You literally destroyed my whole plan here, man. <laughs> I was going to take this so I can attack Ragusa and break the Ottoman uh, truce, man. Oh, dude. Now I literally have to wait for the truce to finish, really? Bro. Bro, this is really not cool. There goes the plan. In that case, I'm not taking Avlona. I'm going to take... Uh, which one's cheaper? Uskupo, this one. There you go. I figured out the perfect uh, peace deal. We're taking these here so they don't expand into the east. And I basically cuck them massively. And I also prevent anybody else from taking Ottoman lands in the process. And I'm also taking Avlona so I have access to Naples and whatever else I might be able to attack afterwards. 118, 115, and coalition is basically nobody important. There you go. We've done our first war against the Otto Brozos. Now let's get ready for the next war, which is going to be against uh, Karaman, I believe, right? Oh, there you go. We got a claim from uh, our vassal Dulkadir, apparently. So I didn't even need to send that uh, diplomat over there to uh, get the claim. Bumios Shakalokios, as they say in uh, Karaman, which is totally a thing that they say in Karaman, obviously. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of coalition, I think, afterwards, maybe the uh, Turkic nations, Crimea and the Ottomans and the other Turkic nation of uh, Genoa <laughs> are going to be a little bit upset, but they are going to get over it, as they say, right? Pretty sure that's the uh, only army that Karaman's got, so I think we've already won the war. We already have won the war. That is an absolutely correct assessment, clearly. Let's bring our fleet over here as well, and we could call the nations. We're not going to call anyone. We can handle this. We are real... Mamalukian penisless men, right? And just like that, boys, we discovered our way of uh, getting back into war with the Ottomans. They just declared their war on Karaman, so if I vassalize Karaman instead of taking all of their provinces, then I am going to be at war with the Mamluks. I mean, with the, with the Ottomans. So then I can basically take another 100% war score from them. <laughs> We're also very close to running out of uh, professionalism, so then I'm going to recruit my uh, mercenary company when that happens. I've ha I haven't recruited anything because I don't want to lose my army professionalism. I'm using it to slack in recruitment first and foremost. And okay, what is this? Let's go ahead and uh, do this. That means we got leadership of the war against the Otobros. We can call in our allies, of course. Cypriots and Fezan. Wait, they still are allies, didn't we? We, uh, oh, we forgot to vassalize them. Schnapps. Karakoyunlu 2. And that's it. And I'm pretty much out of manpower. So, I mean, uh, professionalism. So, I'm going to be recruiting my free company. Or better yet, I'm going to get the uh, grand company. Let's Gucci. And let's also get another general. Of course, for maneuver. What an absolute chattiest Maximus. Obviously, the second war against the Ottomans is significantly easier since we've basically crushed their souls. Whilst I'm doing this war, I'm also getting my claims on Serbia. I got my claim on Imereti. I'm going to get another one on Trebizond. The reason for this is because I want to time my wars perfectly. So once one is over, the other one can start. I'm also using a lot of uh, military points here. Because I got six leader, six military leader. Might as well put them to good use, right? We are definitely... Definitely a little bit behind with our uh, technology. Let's check. So now we are, oh boy, yeah, we're 434 when most of uh, the Europeans are 44. Actually, it's, you know what? It's fine. It is a okay, boys. Oh, dude, revolt of Egyptian Amir. Are you kidding me right now? 
now. Seven pretenders and Fayum. Oh, disgusting. I hate pretender rebels. You guys are the worst. Literally everything wrong in our country happens because of you people, okay? Just saying. Also, can you forts not fall at freaking 57% when I'm not assaulting? Like, actually, please stop falling at a thousand percent, bro. Can we take what we want if we take less money? We could, actually. This is actually okay. 142, 141. Coalition, a little bit of uh, nations around the Ottomans, but that's to be expected. And in just 10 years, we've pretty much gotten rid of the Ottomans altogether. There's no freaking way they're going to recover from this. Also going to have a quick war against Epirus since uh don't really need a reason to take Epirus. Okay, I just want Epirus. Oh, they just got an alliance with Akoyunlu. Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to cancel my alliance with Akoyunlu then. And when I attack Akoyunlu, I'm going to fight the Ottomans again in five years instead of 15 years from now. All right, now let's not forget to uh, start integrating our vassals because I kind of forgot that... Uh, twice already there you go integration number one and integration number two it's gonna take a few years but um it's gonna get a little bit faster after we finish coring up all of these provinces here you know what i'm gonna give these over to the byzantines arta cephalonia since they are their cores and everything right there you go grand province arta one and cephalonia two i'm also gonna be attacking these bad boys here since they're not gonna get help from uh, racids let's go with that should be a fairly quick war also i was gonna attack in the north but i've changed my mind i'm gonna feed my vassals in the south in the meanwhile. Fidel is no more. Now we can uh, start getting our own claim on uh, Karakoyun unless we want to attack them and we want to sneak all the way to Shirvan. We want to include Baghdad and Shirvan in this war. We're going to transfer this over to Hejaz, both of the provinces, since uh, Hejaz definitely wants to annex this for themselves. One thing to note is that we can get a ton of claims in this uh, Arabian Peninsula by just uh, sending an embargo on the Venetians so they there you go and now we can do the alexandrian trade node which offered us claims on all of the northern bits of the arabian penance we can also revoke the embargo if uh, the venetians are not our rivals we don't need to waste the five percent trade efficiency for no reason oh prospering times boys bahria oh god another one of those horrible cities nobody's ever even heard of but okay sure now they've heard of it because it's got 27 trade power after this event speaking of i'm going to be lowering my autonomy in my provinces it has actually gone up quite Quite a little bit since the start of the campaign remember that i had a uh, pretty low crownlands at the beginning now that situation has changed and i've uh, gotten almost 20 percent crownlands so i'm not losing autonomy anymore in my provinces it is in fact 15.194 so now after five percent it is 20 percent we're losing zero autonomy boys come on unsiege it unsiege it please do it for pop there you go all right now we can attack them ourselves this one is for uh, all the nasty stuff you've done in the past karakonyunlu you know what i'm talking about don't you you definitely know this is going to be fairly easy so i'm going to start a second war against uh, rasids since rasids has no alliance set whatsoever it should be easy to give us over to uh hejaz of course totally not my favorite vassal clearly from the amount of lands i've been offering them <laughs> there's an old hejazi saying that's totally not a queen song that goes like uh, another one bites the dust that's that's just how the saying goes oh we've got the great and mighty timurids at our doorsteps yes say well that's totally not terrifying since we're at it we're also going to do another war against uh mara and uh aden aden Ad aden adun come on you got this boys uh, crush those rebel scumbugs wait what the ottomans declared war on uh albania ain't no ah uh, okay it's because albania wasn't getting guaranteed anymore by the venetians makes sense oh we can get a white piece with these boys beautiful because now we can get whatever we want from karakoyunlu and what we want looks a little bit like this here we're taking all of this except shirvan because we want to diplo vassalize what's left of shirvan 137 135 absolutely a beautiful i probably should have done that at the end of the month but hey it's fine don't think any coalitions are gonna form let's see all right now we can come over here and uh five years we can attack mazandran and then we can snake all the way into transoxiana which by that point should hopefully be an independent nation but let's see and let's see how it's going here we're in the process of sieging this down we're gonna take mara's lands as well let's uh get a few of these units detached and send them over to mara the reason i went for this peace deal obviously because i want to get the city of baghdad because i will be forming the uh i'll be unifying islam so i just need uh, three cities from the west and i need baghdad dagestan samarkand sindh and uh muscat i think 
plus uh, Aden, which I'm gonna take now. So I'm pretty much there already, because I got Constantinople, I got the big boys as it is. With uh, Dagestan is uh, gonna be my Diplo vassal, so let's start improving with them now, actually. We might as well also attack uh, Shamar and uh, Najd whilst we're uh, around here, right? They're both allied to each other, so it's almost as if they wanna go down together, fighting like best bros forever, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying there's a bromance in this area, okay? We're gonna start another war against Dawas here, since, uh, again, we need to clean up this area here, and we're gonna peace out these bad boys that we quickly just uh, finished sieging down. Because I don't have a direct connection to uh, Shamar and to Najd, I have two options. I can either give it over to Hejaz or another one of my vassals that uh, would be able to uh, take these provinces or vassalize them, or I could go full on Snoky Dokes and I can just seize lands from Hejaz. In the process, it's going to increase their liberty desire, but I can lower that by placating them, and it's gonna make it a little bit faster for me to integrate them. I've basically ruined my prestige pool, but it's worth it because if I gave more provinces over to Hejaz, it would have made them super disloyal and it would have made them really hard to keep in check, which of course is not what I want, right? All right, there you go. Now we can do this as well. Why are you guys not accepting 138 and 139? They occupied the province. There you go. I found the province. They occupied, boys. Now we can fully annex them. And uh, let's check our overextension. 78.4. Yeah, that's okay. That's not too bad. We can probably annex uh, Dawes here too whilst we're at it then. Let's see how much would this be. This would be 15.2. Yeah, that is definitely within 100% uh, or less, right? You know what? Since we only have one uh, one uh, alliance block left in the south, let's fully get rid of them. This way we have the entirety of the Arabian Peninsula, plus we, well, we, most of it. We're gonna get Hormuz afterwards. We're getting the claim one. Look at the amount of rebels the Ottomans have right now. Shia Zila. Oh no, this is bad. Oh, these bastards are converting the provinces to Shia. Oh, dude, are you kidding me right now? They've literally converted almost all of the Ottoman provinces to Shia. Clearly, they don't have enough strength to deal with this themselves, considering that Albania owns half of their country right now. Looks like a jam is not joining to help out their good friends in Hormuz because they're reduced to a one province. Oh, that would have been awesome if they joined because then I could have fed back all of the cores they got here. I could release them from my province that I have, but they have to disappear if I have to release them, you know? So yeah, feels uh, feels a little bit bad there. What does the fox say? Annex all of Hormuz except these provinces because we're going to release uh, Oman from them and then we're going to we're gonna feed them back all of the cores. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking bored. I'm so worried. But hey, look at that. See? Omani cores, literally all of Yas, Queen, and uh, what's left of Hormuz. So uh, that's a win in my book, boys. Now that we are at peace, we can also do this interaction. We gain 10,000 moon power, and uh, we're also going to start integrating some more of our vassals. All right, boys. So let's uh, enable scootage on Dulkadir so we can actually release them, so we can actually integrate them after we start the next war. And let's uh, release Oman, Buyas Nokos. Look at that. Look at that juicy schnapps over there, boys. Wait, what? <gasps> yes, fully annex what was left of Hormuz, so that means I can just do this. Oh, my schnabadoobs. Actually, I kind of want to fight Baluchistan also so I can take some provinces from them. So maybe I'll wait until Baluchistan is willing to join in this war. Yep, I think that's the right move there. And look at that. The uh, Timurids released Armenia from Karakoyunlu as well as, I think, Georgia. I'm not really sure. What pisses me off, though, is that Dagestan that I was going to diplovasalize got fully annexed by Gazikumun, so um, I'm gonna have to have a few more wars in here to get Dagestan, I guess. But hey, these guys have their independence war against Transoxiana, and they're losing, so let's speed up that uh, losing process, shall we, by attacking them ourselves and taking some lands from the Timurids also. And whilst we're at it, we're also gonna be attacking Mushasha, since uh, they've got no alliances right now, and they just have an easy pickings for provinces here. Also, we can do old power cost minus 5%, so that's pretty cool. Let's also make Turkish and Hejazi accepted cultures as well. We got 4 out of 5 cultures right now. That is a juicy. I'm also waiting for the Venetians to finish their war against the Ottomans, which right now have 2,000 units, and then I can feed back what's left of uh, the Ottomans to Karaman and Byzantium. Guessing only Karaman, because Venice is probably going to take the rest of their country. In this war, we're trying to go for the vital areas here, such as uh, the Fort in Herat, which is their capital, a few more fortifications on the edge. I'm letting them actually siege down my uh, vassal's capital and sieging down the Arabian bits because they're not as important. War score wise, I'm getting way more war score from taking down their forts than they are from taking down a few of my desert provinces. Don't need to fully annex Mushasha, but I'm doing it since uh, I don't want another annoying nation in a potential coalition against me. Oh, Venice gave back Smyrna to the knights. <laughs> okay, looks like I'm gonna get a claim 
game on uh, Smyrna, boys. And oh my god, did they just release Bulgaria? Bro, please tell me they didn't just do this. I had the province of Kostandil so I can release Bulgaria. And the Venetians just said, just went, I'm taking Ragusa from you. I'm also releasing Bulgaria. A uh, fuck are you, Mameluk? <laughs> they really don't like me, do they? To be fair, I should have released it from Kostandil a while back. I kind of forgot. Ooh, Austria declared their union on Hungary. Interesting. Hungary is massive, actually. Holy snaps. Good luck that, uh, Austria. And it looks like Transoxiana is doing all the hard work for me here. They literally just wiped out what's uh, left of the Timurid army. One more city down, 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 down. Is it weird that I keep singing randomly? I do it a lot. I just edit out most of it. But you guys are going to be shocked if you knew how, how much I do it. All right, we made significant more progress. Now we can probably do the peace deal. Yes, we can. Can we take more money? 835. Coalition, almost nobody, to be fair. And 109, 106, absolutely amazing. Most of the battle were carried out by the uh, Transoxianians, so we've uh, piggybacked off of their independence war. Let's let's be real here. I'm also gonna give Kostendil to the uh, Byzantines since uh, well, I have no use for it really anymore. Let's go ahead and do that. And we have our claim on the Serbians. We can attack them whenever we need to. But I also want to attack the uh, Transoxianians before they um, they lose the war with the uh, Timurids, which I hope that they will not though, because the Timurids are pretty weak now. They should be able to win this war. I mean, look at this. They got 54% war score on the uh, on the Timurids. So my money's on Transoxiana here. We also managed to pay off all of our loans now, so we're pretty decent economically. We're going to use the rest of the money to invest a little bit in our country. I'm actually going to recruit some more units so I can start the war in the west now. War number one is going to be against uh, the Neapolitans since we need the two provinces of Palermo and Messina. And then we just need one more war against Castile and uh, Tunis, both of which are allied to each other, so that should be fairly easy too. And I think we can do that uh, Baluchistan war now as well. Oh, Timurids would join in this. What? Okay, Timurids seem like uh, they're not as great, great as they used to be, are they? Let's also see what we're going to do with the Transoxianians, actually. Maybe we'll do this war first, and then the Timurids one after. Let's go with this war quick. Where's my army at? Oh, my army is at the border with uh, Yas. Fair enough. We just need 54% war score. That is it. Not more than that. We're only taking these four provinces. I should probably mention that at this point, I have one army almost entirely dedicated to wiping out rebels, since there's just so many rebels popping out everywhere. The beauty about Naples is that as soon as you take their capital of Napoli, you pretty much have a 100% war score on them since it's the only fortification aside from Messina that they have. It's also debase our currency and then use this interaction to lower the corruption, basically gaining 420 ducats for nothing. It's a free money, everybody. And I'm going to take advantage of the fact that uh, Castile and Sus are not joining in against the Tunisians, well, to help the Tunisians so I can take my provinces from from them. Hey yo, Bohemia is the new emperor. Hot dang, boys. Hot diggity dang. Obviously, I could take more stuff from uh, Naples, but I don't really need to. Actually, maybe I'll take Cagliari so I can extend my uh, my range here. Yeah, Cagliari sounds like a good idea. Let's go for this deal in that case. Boom shakalokos. Looks like the uh, war against Transoxiana is about to be over because, as expected, they are giving me exactly what I want from them. Taking all their money also since I can and and maybe war reparations if possible not possible okay you know what that's fine let's go with this peace deal here we got Samarkand one more city needed to restore the caliphate of Islam and we can also become an empire now apparently that's pretty cool we got to do this quick war also against uh, Karakoyunlu so let's go ahead and uh, rush for Shirvan so we have access to Dagestan after you know I found out the other day that um the uh, Tunisians and the Italians signed a peace treaty officially ending the uh, Punic Wars I find that really dumb because neither Italy or Tunis are successors to the Roman Empire or the Carthaginians at all. So it's like, what the F bros? I'm also a man of my word and I'm only taking vital provinces from the uh, Tunisians. So I'm snaking my way around here and I'm essentially uh, making a border with Sus and a border with the Castilians because I'm going to go to war with the Castilians and I'm going to be Diplo vassalizing Sus, which has the last province needed. We got Shirvan, now we can go over and take uh, Dagestan next. Oh lol, I I can actually threaten these guys to give me Dagestan. I don't even need to go to war with them. Beautiful, because they were allied to like Crimea or some schnapps. Would have been a fairly longish war. If it wasn't for all of these rebels popping off every five seconds, I would be unifying uh, Islam a lot faster, honestly. Oh, I could get a thousand ducats right now to help out in the future wars against Castile and I think the other war against Sindh, because I actually forgot about Sindh. Let's also 
uh, send some money for these boys so we can diplo vassalize them. 50 ducats should be enough. Luckily for me, the Timurids eventually did give military access to uh, Mara, which means I can move my troops across their lands to Mara's ally of Sindh, from which I'm gonna grab the province of Tata. On the other hand, Castile is not so easy because crossing over to the other side means defeating their fleet. Right now, they got 45 ships. That being said, a lot of those are trade ships and they are not on the same spot as the entire fleet, so I'm gonna try and take out their ships one by one whenever I see them uh, separate from the rest of the main uh, army or main armada really. We're taking advantage of the fact that we do have the straits now for the time being so this can change fairly quick. I'm gonna bring over 50,000 of my units. The Castilians also have 50,000 but they have Miltech 6, we have Miltech 7 and we have cannons in our armies here. Where's my main army? Four cannons so we should take out their uh, fortifications really quickly. We just need Malaga and Toledo and that's it. We can do the peace deal for Cordoba afterwards. And we seem to have uh, finished the siege of uh, Kishn, or however you pronounce this. Just in time, as I cross over my units, their uh, main fleet has attacked me. And let's see how this is going to go. They got uh, 25 engagement with, so that means we have 25 of our ships against 25 of theirs. They got a lot of heavies. They got three heavies. They only have transports and three heavies. That's it. Come on, bro. Come on. No, they're trickling in reinforcements. They got six heavies now. I'm going to pull back and I'm going to recruit some more galleys. Yep, let's not lose our entire fleet here. We lost eight galleys oof but right, it's fine everything is a-okay we transported our fleet across so now let's just uh, build say 20 galleys and then come back and bring more units if needed on the other side in the uh, iberian parts we are going to be assaulting this uh bad boy over here hey we got tata can we actually take it also we cannot we gotta siege the rest of our country okay let's do that then a little bit of india cgs in the morning am i right boys gold rush why oh oh the tafilal gold mine true true now after i've taken most of their country they agreed to my terms booyah snokos we got uh, Zitata. I'm also going to piece out the rest of uh, Mara. I'm not going to actually take uh, all of it. I'm going to let them keep two provinces. I just want to focus on my uh, Castilian war. I don't want to pay too much attention to this part of the map. And just as I was saying, taking Toledo and the other fort should be enough because now they're giving us Cordoba, Malaga, and even a little bit of cash on the side. Nobody even gives a schnapps about this, obviously, because they're Christian lands. And the end result is the fact that we now can uh, unify Islam since we have all all of the provinces required. So avec le clickiest maximus, we now have the uh, caliphate, the uh, tier one government reform that offers missionaries and stuff, war score versus other religions, governing capacity, absolutely delicious. We also have the dev cost reduction interaction, the gain claim on uh, heretics and so on, and construction cost reduction. Let's also make Mazandrani an accepted culture for that matter. And we've done this by 1484, basically first 40 years of the campaign. We had pretty tough RNG also and we didn't alt F4 which shows that if I was able to do this on the first attempt if somebody try hard they can probably do this 20 years faster if they literally only go for the provinces required right hey, if you enjoyed this run you're gonna enjoy my Ottoman run up next